right, welcome back everyone to Tuesday Night Eternal's Holiday Invitational. It's time for the top four, and I hope you're on the edge of your seat because it's also time to switch over to Throne. That's enough expedition for now. We've got top four Throne action here. We've got two FJS decks, we've got a Huru deck, and we've got a sweet Vara Sanctum Felm deck. Um, so, we got a couple good ones here, but because Keith Peleg had the honor of finishing with the number one seed, we are going to take a look at Keith Peleg's deck for a few minutes while they get set up. So, let me pull that up on screen here. And now you should be able to see Keith Peleg's FJS control deck. So look at this. You got four smugglers. Actually, you got eight smugglers. You got both sets of smugglers there. You got four Baby Vara, four Rizan, and four Joe of the Endless Horde. And then you've got a ton of removal sweats here. You got Defiance, Annihilate, Display of Ambition, Suffocate, Torch, Pristine Light, Slay, all the different removal spells to go along with your high power threats. What do you think of this deck? Um, I mean, it's it's a sol solid version of the deck. Uh, the tre the treasury the treachery is interesting. Uh, I haven't seen that being run. It could very well be very good, especially. Uh, it would be very very good against mirrors, for example, that include uh, or or, uh, they just get the carriers out of the market. You could snipe the carriers, uh, with the treachery. Now you can still get them. You can still display them back and whatnot. So it's not as useful. Uh, it's not. It's not as good as uh, that uh, scenario. But uh, yeah, it's it's a solid list. It does not include the eclipse dragons. Um, I'm still not sold on the eclipse dragons, and I played it last weekend uh, or this weekend, I guess, in the ECQ, and I and I did well with the deck. But I I still. And I'm I'm not too sure about them, right? Mm -hmm. um, they performed well in certain spots. They didn't perform well in other certain spots. So uh, it's up in the air whether or not I think uh, whether or not the Eclipse Dragons are, are, are a good option. Um, and in this case, uh, they, they they decided not to run it. I believe there's another uh, another version of the deck uh, in the top four that that, that did run the Eclipse Dragons. Okay. Um, so we'll see. Well, we'll see whether or not it's uh, they're better than it. I do like the. Um, the, the pristine light uh, other you need pristine light main or market that's something that i forgot in the ccq is that pristine light is a real good card um so uh yeah i'm, I'm glad i'm glad to see uh that that option here all right and then i was no, actually notably able to... there's no gavel yeah. there's no gavel in the market of the, the this uh of keith peleg's deck and that that um that means that they're they basically said, you know what, reanimator won last event, but nobody wants to play reanimator. <laughs> nobody wants to play reanimator. Guess what? No reanimator here. Um, and then I was able to switch over real quick to Jedi EJ's deck while the players are getting set. Uh, looks like we've got Hojin Crownbreaker, Koth on the Far Watch, Merchant, Valkyrie Enforcer, um, Steel Tempest, Anya, nice, nice play Anya there. Ooh, I love Jotun Feast Collar. That's pretty nice. And then you've got Savagery, Mirror Image, image Vanquisher's Blade, one Abergraft, three Palaces, two Perul's Choice, four Levitates, and three Finest Hour. Um, pretty nice Huru deck. I like the take on Huru here. Let's see if we can hold up yeah, against the mono um, removal deck, though. <laughs> the thing is, is that the, for one thing in this matchup, I, I, I do believe it's FJS favored because of Vara. And I think that's one of the reasons why this deck didn't uh, didn't perform. For example, last weekend, even though a lot of people were trying the deck, um, is that the Vara got an improvement in the format. Did not get a a, a buff, but kind of a stealth buff yeah. in, in the the fact that Torch is uh, is no yeah. longer fast, and um, uh, so so the three three body doesn't matter. It it it, it still matters, uh, but uh, you can't. Um, you can't snipe it in response right. to uh, a trigger going uh, the trigger going onto the stack, and uh, so I do think that this deck is, for example, strong into like reanimate or something like that. But in an FJS field, which is what we have right now, or N plus Vara as well in uh, in the the, um, the Sanctum, this is going to be a tough matchup. It is possible to win. Uh, the, the the deck is tough to play. Uh, there there are. There's a lot of lines. For example, you you almost never play Hojun on turn two. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah, want to wait until it, yeah. Uh, you want to. Yeah, well, you want to be able to get the value off of right. the. Um, yeah, got to trigger it. Yeah. With the with the levitate. Yeah. So 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 you got to do things like that. You have to understand understand these um 
these little tiny lines and little tiny values. And the, for example, there's three mirror images made. You can do things like savagery, uh, mirror image. You can do savagery, mirror image, and get like double draws off of jo Joe Tufi's color and things like that. You can certainly get a lot of value and a lot of uh, percentage points can be gained by you being very, very well versed with this deck. But I think in the end, it's it's a tough uphill battle against a fire type deck. Okay, well, the players are ready. So it is time for the semifinals. Let's get down to the action here. All right, they are ready. Um... All right, welcome everyone to the first of our semifinals here. We've got the number one seed, Keith Peleg, on FJS Control versus Jedi EJ on Huru Tempo. Keith Peleg is the one seed, and they are also on the play by random draw. They're going to start out with a crest, see a crest on top. And they're going to keep that on top because they also do not have any justice in hand. Um, now, they do have a seek power. Uh, their hand is a lot of setup. You've got a seek power, two quarries, and you've got a Zhou in hand. So uh, a lot of setup for Keith Pelleg. But they do have a torch as well for one answer. Uh, but obviously, they're hoping that Jedi has a little bit of a slower start so that they can draw some draw some gas, get some time to set up here to get to their, their high power late, at, late end. Uh, Jedi, on the other hand, they're going to play out a seat of order. And unfortunately, they cannot play out a two drop. They're just going to have to play a decimated power and pass it back, or a depleted power and pass it back. In the end, I think that um, that slow hands from the FGS deck are pretty good against these hero decks because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's like it, 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 it's not hyper ragger or anything like that. You aren't killing the person by turn five or something like that. You, right. you are generally slow rolling your. And you are trying to gain a little bit of value before you go all in on some sort of combo with its averagery. So I think that it's correct to keep uh, slow hands out of the SG FGS deck against the Hero deck. Okay, and Jedi is going to make the first Maybe action here, playing out a Kothan on turn three. Keith Pell is going to respond with their Vara. We have not seen Vara a lot recently, but she's back. She's back and better than ever. Uh, no sack for Jedi, meaning a 5-5 life steal for Keith Pelleg in Vara. Gonna yeah, and, the... and then, uh, of course, uh, Jet AJ has the <laughs> one of Avergraf in their hand just to get rid of the VAR. That's a really so that that that's that, that can turn the tide potentially in this matchup because the one thing that that uh that the FJS deck has over um over the Hero deck is the fact that they can pop all their Aegis's mm -hmm. like their uh the Jota um, Scholars. We just saw that, we just saw that as well with the, the face Aegis there. Um, Jedi, in order to play that, had to play their Aegis power, which of course got immediately popped by Vara before before she before she took the took the Evergraft there. Um Keith Peleg not throwing the torch there to kill the Kothan. That's interesting. I guess they know they have another turn here, um, but not playing that off there. Just just continue to sculpt their hand. That's what this deck does. You sculpt your hand, sculpt your hand, sculpt your hand until you play <laughs> until you play big threats like Rizan here. It's a little better than playing the torch, having the Rizan here. Although now Jedi is not uh... now Jedi has open power, which he didn't last turn. Now it has a chance to respond. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. They could find us out here, but they could also wait to to use the finest hour on the Anaya later on mm -hmm. uh, to to. Uh, to get an Aegis. Um, I, I do think that they're going to end up uh, levitating at end of turn here yeah. because they can they can play the Jotun Feast Caller, yeah. um, which is a really solid play. Well played there. They do also have an Anya in hand that they can protect with the trigger with the Finest Hour as well, so that's pretty nice. And they so drew this... a Merchant there, which is pretty good. Yeah, the, the the power and the merchant is really nice, but I think they're just going to end up playing the Jotun Feast Caller this turn. Um, the, but they will set up for a, for a, a palace in a couple of turns. I think is a, is what's end up going to end up happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's the Feast Caller. Do love a Feast Caller. It can be fragile at some points, but it's a very very powerful card. And if you're able to attack with it once and have it survive, you're in really good shape. Oh, Keith Pellet going for the the contraband value. Let's see what they get. So, I I always feel like I I I thought that the contrabands were going to be so good, and they they haven't they haven't worked out as well, well in now, my now opinion. You've got, now you've got the um, contrabands built into built into a creature on the <laughs> on the listeners. All right, there you go. Uh, another Joe on top, and Keith is going to leave that on top. Now can start casting these Joes next turn, because they do have the eighth yeah. power in so... hand. 
they go for in the market there's for example Stormhalt Knife is a pretty amazing card. They do have a knife, they have a deep forge plate, a harsh rule, a caria, and regent's tomb here. They're gonna be up there. Deep Forge Plate them. is a really good card against uh Oh a tantrum. Well um Oh, and that actually gave the the uh the Rizon life steal, right? Oh, Was that the the four, five, six? What a that that's a pretty nice play. Did that was pretty nice. All right, but not gonna be able to stop the feast caller from drawing here. They might end up denying the uh, the five four here because they can hold up the finest hour to. Interesting. Right. Force are gonna silence the they could have. Although that does All turn right, so into a go flocker. <laughs> that does, yep. Yeah. Now Rizan's um, able to block that Feast Caller. Of course. Probably we... still ended up being worth... Yeah, I think they're going to go for a Palace out of the market, so it, I think it's going to end up being... Whoa. All right. So they're going to go for the Savagery value then? Okay. All right, and there's the Joe that we knew off the top for Keith Peleg. Okay. Fire off a torch on the Enforcer. Ooh, gonna attack with both. Ooh, okay, I guess they have the knife. They have the knife coming down afterwards to take care of the Feast Collar. That'll be nice. Oh, man. Clean answer to that Feast Collar. Not bad. So they can end up killing both the knife and the Rizon this turn, so it's not as bad as what it could have been. But that still wasn't the wasn't what uh, Jedi EJ wanted to see. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Although this is really interesting because they're able to Anaya and they're able to. Um... Okay, so in a couple of turns they might be able to take out this uh, the Joe from the Keith Bellic Sand. I think this is going to work out, right? You play the Anaya, you savagery it, you break both. And then you're able to mirror image, mirror image it, and ha have a um, another six six that could potentially be an eight eight with killer. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, if Keith Pelley plays out the show here. You're right; they can mirror image. Oh, oh and the finest hour man, too. what a draw! Wow, and you can just mirror image this. You can hit the finest hour. Oh, they don't even need they, to. Yeah, I mean, they can just stun it. But whenever you want to, you have that, <laughs> have that available too. Another show off the top. Now you might kill it, but you might just stun it too. Yeah, you can't. I gotta can't say, I've been impressed by Jedi Uj's play. Uh, I've been impressed by Jedi Uj's play today. Um, they they played two very difficult decks to play, in my opinion. The mm -hmm. Yeti's deck from from Expedition and this particular deck here, and they have been piloting them to perfection. Wow, okay, well played there by well played there by Jedi EJ, as you said. That was a difficult deck. There were a lot of tough lines in there, but they played it pretty well. I mean, Keith Pelleg put in a lot of threats there. They were deploying threat after threat after threat, and, you know, Jedi had a nice little turn there. A couple really close turns, but what they were able to do with the Anyas and the removal was pretty good. I um, mean, I thought once the uh, Stormhold knife came down, that was going to be a, a turning point, but um, Jedi was able to, to keep the pressure on. Well played. Yeah. And he's going to take game one. Now, I, one I one do think that top two... Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I do think that uh, the top decking or um, having the uh, the one of um, Avergraft mm -hmm. was actually very very uh, yeah. very very key to that matchup because otherwise the Vara would have would have taken over. For that sure. is true. That was a very nice clean answer to the Vara there for sure. for game two here yeah uh jedi ej keeps a uh the sand it looks good but i think it's sketchy in the terms of the deck oh the the levitate on top is actually real nice yeah yeah keep that <laughs> <laughs> all right jedi gonna be on the play and keith bella gonna scout here and they have a couple more scout lands in hand gonna play out the coast on here and like you said, they have the Hojin with the Levitate coming up behind that. Now Keith has a Torch and a Defiance. Not going to fire off the Torch here. 
Instead, yeah, it's so the defiance, defiance comes down. There's only two of them in the back, so you definitely attack there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now here comes the Hojin. And does Keith go for the and torch? And the torch comes down. Yeah. Does it, does it go for the torch, knowing that it's very likely going to miss? <laughs> does not. Does not fall for the bait. It's going to go for the smuggler. Eh, it wouldn't have been huge bait, but uh, because it still would have killed it. But yeah, Grab the uh, deep forge plate I think here. I think. Wait, what? We go to the market and grab a deep forge oh. plate. He's going to end up uh, playing the the levitate here to get even more damage in. I don't mind this line too too much. No. Okay. Okay. Another Hojin here. Ooh, draws a Suffocate for hmm. turn. But Vara comes down. Vara, yeah. They do have an answer in the Permafrost. It's not a solid answer because, of course, the passive the ability from the Vara is still... A... Well, and the Deep Forge plate as well. Um, that's just going to bust up the Permafrost. Ah, this is Keith Pellick. Okay. Yeah, this is. A, I really like the way that Keith Pellick has played this turnout. They they had opportunities where they could have thrown removal spells at these Hojins, but I like developing the board. I like seeing, hey, permafrost is going to be the way to answer my units. Grabbing a deep forge plate ahead of time, recognizing that you're going to take some damage early. You're definitely going to take some damage from Jedi, but if you can start developing your board, force Jedi to start using these spells now. You know, once you get the deep forge plate on this Vara, it's going to be pretty tough. You can take a lot of damage, yeah. though, from these. Even, uh, Down to six. Defiance is a nice A lot of damage, but I think that uh, Keith Pellick, if they have uh, the undepleted source, which they don't. Oh, they don't, though. That is tough. But they do have a torch, and they saw, saw that. They now have torch and defiance. Can they do anything this turn? Hmm. Maybe I can go for a mirror image out of the market or something like that. Interesting that Keith didn't go for that torch oh, there. Oh, man. Just, just relying on the Defiance, basically. Which I guess makes sense. You know the Defiance is going to hit. Yeah, there, there are plenty of targets for the torch in their deck, whereas Defiance only kills uh, mm -hmm. you know, this particular unit. Yeah. Right? Or And um, and Kothan, I guess. Right. Yeah, having the two Defiances there take out two of the threats in this game was pretty nice. And now that Keith Pellick had the tapped, the, the depleted power last turn, they do have the Deep Forge played online this upcoming turn, which would be very nice on that Vara. And of course, <laughs> Jedi doesn't know that. Jedi has the Valkyrie Enforcer, but that's no way they point that at Vara. No! <laughs> silence the 5-5! Five five. No! <laughs> had, has the silence in hand, but is not going to play it, and instead is going to make a 10-10 Endurance Overwhelm Lifesteal Vara. And that's what Keith Pelling wanted to see. I want to hear what Jedi said under his so breath uh, with that play. Going to get a mirror image. Oh. Mirror image, which will silence okay. the 10-10. Silence 10 it now, yep. Still it's a 10 -10, fine. But... I think they still race this, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I think and that I they could jump like once. I have a smuggler and a treachery in hand, though. Um, okay. Treachery doesn't really do much, but I guess you get the last card. What? The hand, the All right, Torch the Enforcer. Attack for 12. Oh, man, this is close. <laughs> Actually, it's Keith Pelling is winning the one. race. Yeah, Keith Pelling's winning the race at the moment. Um, twelve, twelve is going to beat five, five, five. I think they're going to go for the uh, knife. the storm halt knife. Ooh. Oh, if they don't block here, go to ten, and then play the knife. <laughs> All right, palace. That's a pretty good draw. Palace is really nice here because uh, they're going to put the plus that one doesn't... counter on it and. The knife doesn't actually kill and that, that means... now. Yeah. And they can even defend this, right? They can block either the 2-1 uh, double damage or the 2-2 two, two and chump the 10-10. And the, um, the the palace doesn't die here. And that means that they, if they can um, they can use the, uh, the berserk and kill. 
Well, does the palace... No, because the palace dies combined with the knife, right? So if they attack with all three, oh, yes. you have to block with the enforcer, and then the enforcer dies to the knife. But but Keith Pellick doesn't have the six power for that. Oh, no, but they have it's free. It's free, Because yeah. they're at eight. I don't think you can keep Palace and Enforcer alive. I don't think. I think you can just uh, oh, you can just let this die, right? Maybe. Yeah, you this is gonna to. be. You let ten, this die. Five, so you take three, go down to eight. Yeah, it's good play by Jedi. He there. lets it die. What a solid Jedi EJ, going crazy like he. I mean, recognizing how powerful that 7-7 seven, seven Endurance Flyer is. I mean, that's your route to victory here. Oh, no. Oh, wait. They didn't get anything from the market, did they? They did not. Oh, because they couldn't. They attack here. They can perma the 10-10, play the, uh, play the GMR. Wait, did they have to play and they the knife? Gain two life. Six. Why did Keith play the knife there? Can't you trade the knife for Harsh Rule and Harsh Rule next turn? Yeah, you could have. Yeah. Did the they have to play the knife? Do anything. They gained three. It gained them they five were still health, alive, right? Oh, but they actually gained them three health because of that. They would have been at one. All right, they've gone to one. Huh? No, yeah, that's that's dead now. Jedi is gonna take it. Wow. Wow, oh, Jedi not uh, blocking. D j just don't block the two, the two one with double damage, just in case they have. No, they can't have Razan here, right? Because they wouldn't have the six power. Right. So it's safe to block the two one, I think. No, you're not because of torch. Yeah. There you go, and that's game. Well played, well played by Jedi, and really, really smart play, not blocking, letting the palace go. That's tough when you have a seven seven against <laughs> against a two two. <laughs> not blocking uh, but very well played jedi ej getting to the final 